Hey everybody, it's Crystal Ann Compton and I hope you are having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. I actually wanted to make a video about this whole R. Kelly and Michael Jackson situation because as many of you know, there's you know dynamic energy around both of these gentlemen, one of which is deceased, with regard to pedophilia or sex with underage kids. Now, I don't want to render judgment about these people because of course, I don't know these people. I didn't see anything with my eyes. I know there's evidence here, evidence there. I know that it's, it's out there, but I'm not here to render a moral judgment or to opine about that particular aspect of this. I will say, of course, that with regard for, to my capacity for forgiveness, to my capacity for love, I do struggle the most when it comes to anybody who hurts children, anybody who uh, abuses, molests, rapes uh, children. Like I, that's the, it's always a challenge for me to find my way through my reaction to that, to a place of love, which is, I believe, always the higher calling. It's, it's not that we don't take action. Oh, we're just gonna love them through their terrible behavior and forget about it. No, that's not what I'm talking about. It is society's place to respond appropriately to people who break the law, but as individuals, and especially as spiritual individuals, it is our job to look for where we can bring in the love and where we can show the compassion and where we can hold space for illumination. It's not our job to render moral judgments or morally superior punishments on people. That's not what we're here to do. So I'm not here to do that and, and even to tell you what my cursory opinion about any of this is because I honestly, I don't spend a lot of time watching news and stuff like that. What I wanted to instead address with regard to Michael Jackson and R. Kelly is their art, their actual music, the music that they created and contributed to this world. Because what I have heard from people online and my friends is that they feel almost a sense of guilt or responsibility. A sense of guilt because they really love the music of R. Kelly or they really love the music of Michael Jackson. And now people expect them to throw away well, it's, we're in the digital era. Well, I still have all my CDs. <laughs> Throw away all that music or delete all that music and no longer listen to it. That's our moral obligation is to get rid of it and to deny that we actually enjoy that art. Well, here's what I want to do. I want to let people off the hook with regard to this from a spiritual perspective. Because art, you see, once created, once emerging into the world, no longer belongs to the artist. Art moves through the artist, but once it's been created, it is its own entity, it is its own energy, it is its own thing, and it, it's irrespective of what kind of art. Yes, music, yes, writing, yes, um, painting and, and sketching, and, and also art that we do in, in our homes, interior design, um, all of that is art. But once created, it no longer belongs in a spiritual sense to the artist. Yes, copyrights belong to the artist. Yes, 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 they own that. But what I'm saying is that once I hear that music, it's mine. Once I vibe to that music and respond to that music, it's, it belongs to me. It's doing something to me. And so some of us are conflicted because Michael Jackson's music is still doing something for me. And I love off the wall, like that was my favorite album forever. Don't get me started, I'll start dancing right here. Living off the wall, living so bad at all. Anyway, living off the wall. <laughs> I love Michael Jackson and I, and I always have. I mean, for my generation, icon, icon. And the day he passed was like incredibly shocking and tragic, um, but I don't feel guilty for still loving Michael Jackson's music, irrespective of whether or not he did what is alleged, because I understand that art stands alone. And here's why. Art is a result of a creative process. And let's look at that word creative. Creative comes from create, which comes from creator, creation. All of these things intersect. In order for 
an artist to bring about a piece of art that truly moves others and even the masses, there is an energy or a force that that artist actually collaborates with in order to do that. And that is creator energy. Even in the most messed up artists, and believe me, there are so many artists just wrong in the head, okay, going back centuries, wrong in the head, nonetheless, producing beautiful pieces of art. Why? Because they're collaborating. They're in effect somewhat channeling creator energy, creation energy, creative energy. And we, once receiving that art, we're responding to that. We're not responding to R. Kelly's nature and R. Kelly's character. We're responding to the energy of the creator or the creative within his art. That's what's giving us the goosebumps. That's what's giving us all the feels, making us feel so sexy, which is a good thing. We're responding to creator energy. And yes, even the most wretched among us, even the most despicable among us, have an irrevocable, unseverable, is that a word? Unseverable connection to creator because they were created by creator just as you were. They have access to creator just as you did and do. Just as we are, they are. Now, do they embody it to the way, in, in the degree that maybe they should? Not necessarily. But that doesn't mean they don't have it within them, nor that they have access to them. Even people who are not in love or in spiritual alignment, if you will, clicked into that high vibration, can still access creative energy through the creative process and bring forth beautiful pieces of art. And it's okay for you to be living off the wall, my friend. It's okay for you to be dancing and having fun and letting the body move and feeling those chills and really getting into it. That's the art. That's the creative energy. That's the good part that the artist was able to tap into and channel. So no guilt for your Michael Jackson collection. <laughs> no guilt for your R. Kelly collection. That's how I feel. Now, that's probably a bit controversial because I know there's a lot of people calling for R. Kelly to be eliminated, <laughs> like let, like to become a persona non grata. <sighs> should I get, should I even talk about that? It's just wrong, it's wrong. I mean, that doesn't mean he's not punished for things that he may or may not have done wrong, but it's not your place to call for the blotting out of another person. Your place is to be love. How can you do that? Your place is to channel love into the space. That's all it is. A Course in Miracles says our position should be, I have come into this room to bless this room. There is no other reason for me to be here. I have come into this space to bless the space. There's no other reason for me to be here. I have come into this world to bless this world. There is no other reason for me to be here. So if in all your indignation and in all your calling for the boycott of this or that and witch hunting, which is so prevalent and outrage culture, if in all of that you are not blessing the room, blessing the person, blessing the people, blessing society, blessing the world, then there's a disconnect there. There's a disconnect there. Again, to differentiate, that doesn't mean we don't prosecute to the fullest extent of the law, those who have broken the law, I, I understand that. But as spiritual people, our place is to find the love. It's to find the compassion. It's to find, it's to find ways to, to fix, to rectify, and to bring into wholeness and full integration. That's what we're doing out here in these streets. We're not calling for anybody's head. And, we're also, if you're me, you're still living off the wall. Life ain't so bad at all when you're living off the wall, right? 